back to another Java tutorial video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at arrays. We'll see how to create an array, how to create them in two different ways, how to add values to them, and how to use the values that are in them. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at arrays. An array is a form of collection where you can store multiple values or variables of the same data type. Arrays are helpful when you're trying to keep track of an item or when you want to hold all variables or values that are related for future use. An example is creating an array of students and calling that array a roster. That way a single array can contain a collection of students as you would in a class roster. Arrays are easily created. You instantiate them just like you would with any other class, just like we have been doing with the scanner class. Arrays are fixed in their size, meaning that you must specify the size before using it. You can also specify the size when you directly add data to it, but we'll take a look at an example of that in a little bit. And arrays can be of any data type or of any class. So you could have an array of type string, int, double, char, or you can have an array of type students or bank accounts. Here's two ways to create the array. You can create it by instantiating it and specifying its size. We'll call this method one. So you would put the data type string int double, and then you will put two square braces right after. Those square braces signify that the array is being created. Then you'll put a variable name, names one in my example, gets the value of new string, and then in the square braces again, you would put a number. And this number specifies the size of the array. You can also create an array by adding values to it. However, however many values you add specifies the size of the array. So this is method two. You do it the same way, string, int, double, or char, any other data type or any class, and then the two square braces to signify that it's an array, variable name, in this case names two, gets the value of, and instead of new string, we put two squiggly braces, and inside those braces, you would put the values. Since we're doing a string, I put the values Caesar, Juan, and Cat. This specifies that this array is of size three, and all three indexes already have their values, Caesar, Juan, and Cat. The difference between these two arrays, between method one and method two, is that on method one, where you create the array by instantiating it and giving it the size, is that it could return null values if you don't actually add values to them. So in names one, it has a size of five. So from index zero to four, all of them are empty or null. To add values to them, all you have to do simply is call the variable names and then the index number, that's where you put in the square brace, and then you give it the value. So in the example below, names one, zero, gets the value of Chris. The zero is the index. So how do you use the value that's in an array? To get the value, simply call the array variable and in the square bracket, specify the index of the data you want. So for example, system out print line, names one, and then in the square brace you put a zero, this will print out Chris because it's returning anything that's inside index of zero. Or in the second example, in the array names two, index one, that will get the value of names one, index of zero. Meaning that this will replace whatever is inside the index of one inside the names two array with whatever is inside index of zero of the names one array. So the name Juan, which was in names two, index one, is now Chris, because Chris is in names one, index zero. The index, as we've been seeing, is the location in the array, which starts at zero and then ends at one less than the size of the array. So if the array is of size five, then the index goes from zero to four. If the size is five and you try to add or get a value from an index of five, you'll get an index out of bounds exception. So now that we've taken a look at how arrays work and what they are, let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples of them in Java. All right, so let's get a little bit more in depth and take a look at some examples with arrays. So to create an array, remember that all you need to do is put the square brackets right after the data type. So string, two square brackets, names, and then this is the first way that you can create an array, and that's by passing data already to it, or passing values already to it, by putting them in between these squiggly braces. So we have Caesar, Mary, Louis, Stacy, and Richard. 
these are five values that have been passed. So this array names has a size of five. And then down here we have the other way that you create arrays. Int square brace grades gets new int of five. This way you can create an array of a different size instead of creating it by passing values already to it. The only difference is that when you use this kind of style where you put the size of the array is that you have to then go ahead and put all the values in manually. So grades 0 is 95, grades at 1 is 92, at 2 is 83, 3 is 72, and then 4 is 85. Remember that these numbers here are the index, and the index always starts at 0, and it ends at 1 less than the size of the array. So if you were to put grades at 5, you would get an index out of bounds exception because there is nothing at five because that's past the array's size. I also created two variables down here, a double average and a sum, so we can calculate the average later on. And then we're gonna print out the student's name and the grade from the array. So using a for loop for int i gets the value of zero while i is less than names.length and it's best to use names.length in for loops when you're working with arrays so that way you don't come up with the index out of bounds exception so easily. And then I++. So system out print line, names at index of I plus the space and slash, and then grades at index of I as well. And then we're going to add the grade to the sum as well. So sum plus equals, this is, an, this is another way of writing sum gets the value of sum plus. So sum plus equals grades at i. And then we calculate the average. Average is sum divided by the names.length, which is 5. And then we print it out. Average grade is average. So let's take a look and run it and see what we get. Student grade Caesar 95, Mary 92, Lewis 83, Stacy 72, and Richard 85. Just like it is up here. And the average grade is 85. Now, let's modify the values in the array. Let me uncomment this block here. And we're going to give each student an extra 2% points. So instead of 95, it'll be 97. We're going to print the grade and the name. So new grade after extra 2% points. And this for loop is the exact same. The only difference is in here. Grades at index of i plus equals 2. That's Remember, that's another way of writing grades at i gets the value of grades at i plus 2. And what that's doing is that it's getting whatever is in grades at that index, and it's adding 2 to it. So if at 0 it's 95, plus 2, it'll become 97. And then we're going to print it out again, and let's see what happens. So the original was 95, and the new one is 97. Then we have 92, 94, 93, 95, 72, 74, and then 85, 87. Now let me uncomment this line here too. And we're going to see what happens when we try to replace a value with another value. So grades at index 3, which 0, 1, 2, 3, which is Stacy at 74, gets the value of grades at index 2. So 0, 1, 2, it'll get Lewis's grade, 85. We're going to print that out, and we're going to see what happens. Stacy now has an 85. Stacy's old grade got the value of whatever was in index of 2, which was Lewis's grade. And lastly, I did talk about in the PowerPoint how you could pass classes into the arrays. So let's take a look at an example of that. Student, I created a simple class of student, which let's take a look at it really quick. It's basically the same. It's a string of a name, int of a grade, we have one constructor that takes in the name and the grade. We have a print name and grade method, which will just print the name and grade, and then the basic getter and setter methods. So going back into here, students, an array of students, call it list, gets the value of new student, and the size is five. 
So inside this for loop, which is the same as we've been using before, student, stu, gets the value of new student, and using the constructor, we're giving the values names at i and grades at i. So that way, for every time this for loop runs, it'll be Caesar, then Mary, then Lewis, then Stacy, then Richard, then the associated grades with them. And it also adds that to the list. So list at i will get the value of stu the new student object. And down here, we're calling the print name and grade and having the name and the grade being printed out. Let me actually add a line here so it is easier to see. And then the way this works is that list at zero, since this array list is of the student class, anytime you write list and then the index number, let's say three this time, and you put the period, you get the same methods and the same type of interface that you would get normally if you did something like this. Inside here, STU, we're calling the student variable, or the STU variable, which is of the student class, and we can see the print name and grade, set grade, set name, get grade, and get name methods. So since this array has been created as a student array, anytime you say list at zero, you'll get the same exact thing. So just to show you, let's go ahead and run it and we're going to print out what's at zero, what's at two, and then what's at four. Run it. And we have Caesar at 97, which is zero. At 2 is Lewis, so 0, 1, 2, Lewis at 85, and then 4, which is the last one, Richard, which is 87. So this concludes today's tutorial on arrays. The next video will be on arrays and array lists, so you may see a little bit of a repetition in arrays, but we're going to be comparing arrays to the array lists, and we're going to be seeing why array lists have some added benefits when it comes to using them. Thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.